Um, so where would you put it if you were looking to add it to your company? Um, Rust really shines when you need some when you need raw performance. If you're just doing a handful of transactions every now and again, it really doesn't matter what language you use. Um, just about any language will keep up. It plays nicely with every always pretty much every other system I've attempted to use it with so far. Um, if, so if your problem is mostly CPU bound, you need to crunch some numbers, you need to collate some data, and you need to do it fast. Rust is a really good fit. If your problem is what I call I.O. bound, which means it's waiting on other things, Rust may offer a small improvement, but ultimately your program isn't the cause of the bottleneck. And so if your program, for example, is spending 99% of its time waiting for a database to finish a bunch of calculations, Rust isn't going to make that database any faster. It may improve the tiny amount of time getting the data back from the database and sending it off to the user, but it's not going to, it's not going to be a particularly fruitful um, improvement overall. I mentioned before the absence of data races. Uh, in the Rust world, they call, us, call this fearless concurrency. Um, you can really can just um, spin off threads or green threads, depending on how you structure your program. We'll look at that in a second. Um, for highly concurrent processing, get the most out of your CPU. Uh, Rust is great when you need predictable latency, like, like I said, if you're doing a braking system for a car, or even if you're just doing financial transactions and you want to make sure that the um, end user doesn't have to sit too long uh, while you verify that everything is good. Um, and also because Rust has so many, uh, so, such an emphasis on security, if you're writing customer facing applications that you worry about people trying to break, um, Rust can give you a lot of safety by default and a lot of tools to really improve your safety. So the question I get asked all the time and it came up in last week's webinar with Bill is, okay, I want to use Rust. How do I go about that? And so what I always tell people is have a look at the system that you've got, find a spot that annoys you. It's not living up to expectations. Maybe it's slow, maybe it crashes, maybe it's, maybe you just don't like it, but find a niche and ideally one that Rust, Rust is best suited to help with and spend some time, either get your manager to give you some time or maybe even your own time solving that problem. Um, test it. Rust is great for testing. And then once you've got it in production, you can do side-by-side -side testing, see how, see how much it's helped you. You can talk about how productive or otherwise you were in the process. And it gives you a relatively risk-free way to uh, try it just on a small scale. And hopefully, you know, I'm pretty confident that you'll find that you like what you see. And I always bring this up as a corollary. Um, I don't recommend if you're relatively new to Rust forklifting your entire system. Um, I have seen companies do this and hope and then usually regret it. Um, typically, you want to replace parts of your system one at a time carefully. Um, and once you're sure that this is way, the way you want to go, then by all means start replacing the big chunks. But you you will have a much easier time explaining to a manager that you'd like to take a small risk than you'd like to completely rewrite the whole com everything the company has done for the last X years. Oops. For the full course, visit courses.ardenlabs.com.